beginning on June 9th and, and ending on June 10th, uh, Waverly Shell Rock suffered one of its most devastating floods that it's ever had. Um, it was estimated that the, the flood levels reached uh, around four feet above the, uh, the previous 100-year flood level. And uh, the city was pretty much um, divided in two by the river, uh, east and west. And you couldn't get from one side to the other without traveling about 25 miles out of the way. Junior high school was, was fixable by the time school started. The fifth and sixth grade school was actually in the floodway and the floodplain both and um, was, was heavily, heavily damaged and had water in it for so long uh, that we were not able to salvage much out of it at all. We couldn't get to Southeast School, but uh, we knew right away that the, the damage uh, was pretty heavy and that it was going to greatly impact the school. Our first challenge was, you know, what are we going to do when August comes around? You know, we've, we've got about 60 days here. Uh, what are we going to do in terms of where we're going to put all of our fifth and sixth graders? Uh, we talked about portables. You know, can we rent portables? Can we put them all over our district? Uh, we talked about the churches. Um, and then uh, we talked to a uh, local realtor that just happened to have a, a vacated mall over in the west side of town. I'd say within 24 hours of our first contact, we decided that we were going to put our fifth and sixth grade in there. And so with the remaining 52 days, we put in 44 classrooms, a multi-purpose room, cafeteria, offices, and uh, completed everything. But uh, they were working day and night for, for weeks and weeks, and we started school on time. That's when we started to talk about, well, what should we do in terms of We've got an aging 86-year-old junior high, and then we've got a, a building that cannot be used again. Uh, but the community knew that, you know, with a building that old, uh, that probably this would be the most opportune time for us to replace that as well and create a middle school out of two schools. Generally speaking, you've got the luxury of time. Uh, we did not. Uh, we've got a school to build. We've got kids to take care of. Um, you know what? We need to get going. We knew that the PA money was going to replace Irving. That, that, was, that, was, that was a given. We knew that we could do an improved project and replace 5th and 6th, but then we thought, well, at the same time, why don't we replace 7th and 8th, which has been flooded three times. If we were going to be able to do anything, the referendum was needed in order to include the junior high school. My role in, in this project uh, was primarily that of a community volunteer. It was called our, uh, our, fan, our fan committee. And uh, it was made up of about 15, 20 people. We kind of had an eclectic mix of, uh, of people around the table, uh, from school district people to people associated with our local college to community people. Um, but we all kind of had that one thing in common, is, is how can we be better together in getting the word out and getting things uh, organized. And really, uh, to be if there's such a thing as being blessed after a disaster to have state and federal people come alongside of a community and say, now if you can get this organized right, we'll help. Our roadmap was that we needed to make sure that everybody understood the same sense of urgency that we felt, also that, uh, that this was going to increase taxes. And so what the committee wanted to do is to let people know that. If you vote for this bond referendum, this is what it will cost you. We had a tax calculator right on our webpage. You know, whatever your assessed value of your home is, plug it in and it'll tell you exactly what it's going to cost you per year. The message was, uh, this is about the future. Uh, this isn't just recovery. This is about building a school for a better future. One of the strategies that we chose to uh, help our community uh, actually get a handle, be able to get their arms around it, was to open up the places of devastation in ways that we could safely do that. So it wasn't having an open house at a new building or it wasn't taking a van or a bus ride to a building that we had identified as a benchmark. We did open houses in our buildings that were destroyed. Because if you're telling one person that story and having one person see that building or that devastation, uh, you're really showing it to 20. You know, when we developed this little uh, conversation piece, a little booklet with artist renderings of what that future campus could look like. I took it to a barber shop took it to a beauty parlor, and I just laid it on the table. And, I, and what's the one thing you're doing while you're waiting to get your hair cut or to get your hair done? It's just, I want something to read. I got, I got 10, 15 minutes. 
I made sure that our school district booklet, that coffee table book, was everywhere. Any place that you were going to rest and have a conversation, I wanted that to be one of the things you could possibly pick up along with your uh, better homes and gardens. The greatest challenge is knowing what's up against you, especially with school district uh, referendums and, and voting, is that that's usually a place where people will push back and say, we aren't going to do that now, it's not a good time. Uh, we just want to get back to zero, as I said. We just re restore. Let's not just get me back to where we were. Um, so the challenge, I think, was convincing a voting population to get out, roll up your sleeves, and see a preferred future, not just what it was like. Our little campaign headquarters on that night was at the Fainting Goat. And I remember all of us sitting around the table and everybody had their cell phones and we were just waiting until that threshold piece where we knew we had it in the bag. And uh, the whole place just erupted in laughter and tears and cheers uh, because it wasn't just a slight margin. It was, it was an overwhelming yes. We passed a bond issue because 65% of our voters approved it at a time when the economy is, is the worst it's been in many years and decades for some people. Uh, at a time when we've just suffered the most devastating flood that the community had ever had and there are people without homes and people without jobs and yet this community, our district, uh, not only Waverly but also in Shell Rock, passed a bond referendum that gave us the money to build a new building. When I heard about a tornado safe room, boy that just seemed, you know, seemed like it, it clicked with me. So we really made a, a conscious effort to try to get this. Uh, we were the first school in the state to be offered to be awarded a, a safe room grant. With the safe room goes a generator, you know, so we have part of the building that is going to have power no matter what. Uh, the heating and cooling is all geothermal with, re with redundant systems, so if one goes down, we have another one come up. So, you know, lots of planets had to align for us to be able to, to do this. Mother Nature has afforded you an opportunity to take a fresh set of eyes and look at this thing. And it's something that would have never been afforded you uh, had you not had the devastation. Literally, we would not have been able to do this on our own. I impossible. We would not have been able to do it with just the support of the community. We would not have been able to do it with just the support of FEMA. But with the support of all of those different entities, we were able to put this together. And it worked out pretty well. As I look at the project now in hindsight, and I drive by it, and I've toured it a number of times in different phases of construction. Um, I believe the project exceeded my expectations. It's amazing. It's, it's had a transformative effect on this community. I mean, every morning we all wake up, is still a small or a smaller rural Iowa community that dealt with the very worst of what Mother Nature had to give it. And uh, our enrollment's going up. People are, I mean, it's a destination. It's a, just an amazingly dynamic energizing building. Um, we've got new technology in the hands of every child. Um, it's become a benchmark by which other communities can come and look at it and say, I wonder what the possibilities really are.